everyone, and welcome back to Stocks to Watch. I'm Ashley Berry, and today we're spotlighting a biotech company making meaningful strides in cancer immunotherapy, GT Biopharma Inc. They're trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker GTBP. And GT Biopharma is really developing next generation protein or their trademark trike therapeutics designed to activate a patient's own natural killer cells to aggressively target cancer. And the the company really recently hit an important clinical milestone, one that could signal a major step forward for their leading drug candidate called GTB 3650. And with us today to break all of it down is Michael Breen, executive chairman and CEO of GT Biopharma. Michael, great to have you with us again. Thank you, Ashley. Always great to be here. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, you just completed the safety review for the third dose level of GTB 3650 with no issues. So let's talk about how big of a milestone this is for you and the program overall. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So this, this is really quite major and not to be underestimated with regard to the way the FDA is very prescriptive, particularly with a drug like ours, which is a first in human trial. Mm -hmm. So this is a phase one trial and you have to go, the, the, the FDA start you at a very, very low dose, obviously to ensure safety. And then you're allowed as you work through the cohorts just to increase the and escalate the dose levels. So as you've rightly identified, we're now we've now got through the first three cohorts without any safety or tolerability issues. And um, we've also been able to demonstrate along the way GTB 3650's ability to activate endogenous NK cells and to induce NK cell expansion. And if I may just for our, for the viewers just explain what that actually means. So the NK refers to natural killer, and that effectively is a type of white blood cell. So it's the body's own natural immune system, which when you get infection or or you have something like cancer or, or autoimmune disease, then the, in a normal healthy human being, the body's white blood cells or natural killer cells would be able to recognize and that's important also to recognize and then kill and keep killing whatever the infection or cancer or autoimmune disease is until it is 100 percent eradicated so for us to be able to get to this point in the trial is very important and very exciting and we now look forward very much to moving forward with regard to the increased cohort dose levels of giving a greater drug and as as you've said it's for cd3 positive cancer, so that's blood cancer, so AML, acute myeloid leukemia, and MDS. And we very much look forward to being able to demonstrate not, not just safety, but hopefully at the higher dose level, some efficacy. Yes. And, you know, I like how you said that it's not to be underestimated. This is very significant, this cohort three. And now moving to a higher dose, it would be, I'm assuming, cohort four. So, so why is this important to keep increasing the dose in the trial? So, as I said, the, the FDA were prescriptive with regard to the starting dose level, and that was 1.25 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day for a patient. And so that was cohort one. Mm -hmm. um, cohort four is 10 micrograms per kilogram per day uh, for the patient. So it's almost 10 times what the starting dose level for cohort one was. And we, we of course have some data from our previous trial in 2021, also for blood cancer, for what we now refer to as our first generation molecule 3550. Our, this trial that we're in currently is for 3650, and that's a much improved, much more potent molecule, which incorporates what's called nanobody technology and also camelid technology. So getting getting to cohort four, I think we, we reasonably believe, particularly based on what we saw in the first trial for the previous molecule, that we will see something significant in terms of efficacy. 
So, so Michael, as I, as I said in the beginning, your leading drug candidate, and you just mentioned, that's GTB 3650, which you just explained. Um, have you seen early signs that it's working the way you hoped it would? Yes, absolutely. So, so the way any, any trial works is that you monitor the patients constantly. You monitor their, their temperature, their blood oxygen, but also their blood biomarkers. So what we have seen for cohorts one to three, even at those very low dose levels, we have seen that the data from those multiple blood biomarker assays that we have taken from the first six patients, that they showed heightened immune activity. So what that tells us is the drug is demonstrating in their blood that it's starting to show signs of activity. And it also indicates to us that we what we believe, which is that there will be greater heightened activity as we escalate through the dose levels where we effectively just give more drug. Well, it certainly sounds promising. So let's talk about cohort four, which you've moved on to or moving on to now. What kind of updates should you know patients, investors expect in early 2026? So as you rightly identified, we will be putting out some data in early 2026 with regard to this trial. Um, so cohort four is 10 micrograms per kilogram. Cohort five will be 25 micrograms per kilogram. And cohort six will be 50 micrograms per kilogram. Uh, cohort seven, I'm not sure we'll actually get there or need to get there. But that, if, if we were to, that would be at 100 micrograms per kilogram. Mm -hmm. So... We believe on, on the significantly increased amount of drug that these patients in cohorts four to seven will receive, that we will get um, very interesting data, particularly with regard to reductions in bone marrow blast counts, as we actually did see for our first less potent a drug 3550 in 2021. So this one, this drug molecule 30, GTB 3650, we estimate to be between 10 and 40 fold more potent than the previous one. And then for 3550, we saw bl blast count reductions in bone marrow of between 33 and 66 percent. So we're, we are really very hopeful of what we will see as we could escalate the dose levels. Yeah, hopeful indeed. It certainly sounds very impressive. And, and the potential you have to save lives here is just remarkable, I must say. So with all this progress that you're making, why do you think GT Biopharma is really an appealing investment right now for those that may be just learning about your company following your stock, GTBP? So that's a, that's a truly excellent question, Ashley. So what I would say to you is a couple of things. The first one I would say is the world needs to find a more humane, better cure for cancer. The current treatments that patients receive, which range from anything from surgery to chemotherapy, which is poison the blood, or radiation, which is burning the flesh, is, is really quite barbaric. And I, I'm very much convinced that we need to find a way forward and for, find it very soon. So the first thing I would say and that is, Anyone considering an investment should always think of, let me invest in some, some cancer <clears throat> um, clinical research companies because that is going to be a very good thing to do for mankind and it's a good thing to invest in to, to make sure that that's adequately funded. But in addition to that, if that's not enough, the second thing I'm going to say is that in terms of who we are and what we do, we have possibly the most prominent scientist, Professor Miller, out of the University of Minnesota, who is the inventor of our science. And he's been in this space for 30 years. He's regarded as the key opinion leader, if not the key opinion leader in the NK natural killer engager space. So based on that, we believe that we have got one of the best people involved in our company as the senior consulting medical director and inventor of the science. But also I would say to you that it's a platform technology, which means that, so it's, a, it's as we've discussed at the start of the, start of the interview, 
it's it's called a trike so it's a tripartite molecule so it's got three constituent parts it's got a cd16 receptor it's got a wild type or camelid interleukin 15 which is what we refer to as the secret sauce for helping to to activate or switch on and, and laser target the cancer, but also to proliferate the natural killer cells and then to provide the natural killer cells with persistence. So we believe that that technology, given that it's a platform, so for blood cancer, the target that binds onto the cancer cellar is something called CD33. But we're also going to be doing other trials in 2026 and 2027 for in 26 it'll be for solid tumors where the binder the binder part of the platform will be b7h3 which pretty much all solid tumors highly express and then in 2027 it'll be for autoimmune disease and the target will be cd19 so as i say it's a platform technology we're not just a one-trick pony mm -hmm. and if you look at some of the other companies that have been acquired by big pharma where they had platform technology the numbers involved have been astronomical. And I will say, you know, Michael, given your mission and your purpose, it's not just about making money here. It's about making a true difference, especially for investors if they invest in NASDAQ GTBP. So Michael Breen, Executive Chairman, CEO of GT Biopharma, thank you so much for joining us today. And for sharing these important updates on your company, it's certainly exciting to see the momentum building around the trike platform, as we talked about, and the progress underway with GTB 3650. And to our viewers, if you'd like to learn more about GT Biopharma, you can always visit them online at gtbiopharma.com. Michael, thank you so much for joining us here on Stocks to Watch. Thank you, Ashley. It's always a pleasure.